controller design for a TS posi model uh, common input matrix. This is the fifth lecture in this fourth model on fuzzy control. In previous three classes, we discussed mainly the Mamunani type of controllers. Today onwards, we will be talking uh, mostly on TS fuzzy model. Okay, what is TS fuzzy model? What is common input matrix? They may be very uh, new to you or some of you have some understanding, but we will learn in detail what they are. So, topics that we will be covering is our, our TS fuzzy model representation of a nonlinear system, identifying the parameters of the local linear models, stability analysis when the subsystem have a common input matrix, controller design and simulation results. So, representation of a nonlinear system. If I am I'm, I'm looking at a, a nonlinear system in discrete time, then usual uh, way approach is uh, x is the my state space n dimensional state space, x k plus 1 is f x k u k and y k is h x k u k. Okay. So, this is our normal uh, function description and f is a n dimensional uh, function vector h is again uh, m dimensional output vector. So, I have m output and n state and uh, u is p dimensional input vector. So, the above system can be effectively modeled by fuzzy merging of equivalent linear system in different operating region using Takagi Sugen of fuzzy model. So, what is meaning of this is that a Takagi Sugen model fuzzy model of a nonlinear system is that although the system dynamics is nonlinear overall, but locally the system is linear. So, by fuzzy merging of these linear subsystems, okay, uh, we can construct an approximation of the actual nonlinear dynamics of the system. So, this is a, a typical T S fuzzy model. A T S fuzzy model is composed of m rules, where jth rule has the following form r j the rule j if x 1 k is f 1 j and so on that is x 2 k is f 2 j until x n k is f n j then that means, in the jth fuzzy zone the, the system is represented by linear linear system. Okay. In discrete time here we have written it can be also written in continuous time. So, x j k plus 1 is a j x k plus sorry this is mistake this is not there x k plus 1 is a j x k plus b j u k and y k is c j x k plus d j u k. Uh, because x k plus 1 and y k they are of the system states we cannot put j there j is affiliated to the, uh, the coefficient that system matrix a j control matrix b j uh, this is your output matrix c j. Okay. So, the where x is x 1 x 2 until x n n dimensional vector and j equal to 1 to m that means, I have m capital M fuzzy rules given a current state vector x k and input vector u k the T s fuzzy model infers x k plus 1 as how does it matter because we have to finally, say what is x k plus 1. So, x k plus 1 is the fuzzy merging or fuzzy blending of output of each system. So, output of each system is uh, say x k plus 1 is uh, here is a j x k plus b j u k this is my uh, the jth system dynamics 
and I multiply with that the corresponding mu z, the membership function. You know this membership function normally is derived either minimum of the membership function uh, associated with the f 1 j 2 until f n j or product of them. We can select any one of them, but whatever it is that is mu z, you select one principle and then find out what is the mu z, uh, the membership function uh, inferred for the rule. Okay. See membership function is always given a crisp value x 1 k, I know what is the membership function from f 1 j. Similarly, given a crisp value x n k, what is the membership function? The membership function associated with x n k is computed from f n j, but the membership function of the rule is mu j and this mu j is either mean uh, minimum of these membership functions that are computed or you can say mu 1 uh, uh, x 1 k into uh, mu 2 x um, mu 2 x 2 k until mu n x n k is mu j. We can do that also. So, once uh, I do that uh, and, and I sum it over from all the rules from 1 to m divided by the, the summation of all this membership function mu j that we have already computed j equal to 1 to m mu j. So, this is how we so first a T s posi model we have uh, m rules and this is my jth rule and for jth rule this is my x k plus 1 I multiply with corresponding membership function associated with the rule and then I sum such quantities for each rule from 1 to m and then I divide that quantity by the summation of all the membership function that is mu j. And similarly uh, this was x k plus 1 before 1 and y k is similarly mu j y j this is not y j y k uh, j equal to 1 to m until j equal to 1 to m mu j where mu j uh, in this case you know we have selected in this paper as a product, but you can also take as a mean it is all up to uh, you the designer. So, mu j i x i is the membership function of the fuzzy term f i j j equal to 1 to m. So, the overall fuzzy system can be simplified into okay. so overall fuzzy system that is overall fuzzy system was this one x k plus 1 is this quantity. This is my the fuzzy dynamics of the fuzzy dynamics uh, representation of the nonlinear system in terms of fuzzy dynamics. Okay. So, this fuzzy dynamics can be written in terms of x k plus 1 is a bar x k plus b bar u k, where a bar is sigma j a j j equal to 1 to m, where sigma j is mu j upon this. You can easily see that it is very simple. If I rewrite this equation, I can easily write down this this is simply you see that I can write this one as uh, a j. So, I write this as a bar x k b bar u k where this a bar is you see that sigma mu j by this quantity I can define sigma 
j equal to 1 to m mu j this quantity. So, all that I am doing with this mu j I am dividing by this total summation which is this and the summation is j equal to 1 to m ok j. So, this quantity is if I represent as sigma j. So, I am writing a bar is j equal to 1 to m sigma j a j. So, this is what exactly we have done here x k plus 1 is a bar x k plus b bar u k where a bar is sigma j a j and we defined here sigma j a j j equal to 1 to m. Similarly, b bar is sigma j b j j equal to 1, c bar is sigma j c j j equal to 1 to m, d bar is j equal to 1 to m sigma j d j and I already defined what is sigma j before mu j upon the total summation. And you must recognize that sigma j from 1 to m, this is most important, this is always true. The total sigma j has to be 1. Okay. So, the overall system is nonlinear. So, you can easily see that this is a very convenient form, although I am representing this in a state space format, it appears to be linear, it is not linear because a bar is a function of sigma j which you see here and sigma j is a function of x k sigma j is a mu j and mu j comes from x j okay this is a function of x k so just like we did for continuous time sorry discrete time similarly also we can say for continuous time instead of x k plus 1 i'll write x dot uh, is a bar x plus b bar u, where again x is n into 1 dimensional vector and y is your whatever we wrote earlier m into 1 dimensional vector and u is p into 1 dimensional vector. Okay. And similar the whole thing again is similar a bar is sigma j, sigma j a j and b bar is sigma j b j. Uh, c bar is sigma j c j and so forth. We what we said is until now we just said what is T s Fossey model right. Now, given an actual nonlinear plant dynamics can I, can I directly write what should be the T s Fossey model it is actually simple. So, the linear model parameters. So, how do I find out for each rule what should be my individual linear system. So, to find out what is individual linear system one of the method is a linearization. So, the linear model parameter a j s and b j s can be found by linearizing the nonlinear system dynamics the simple example is suppose the nonlinear dynamics is given as x dot is f x u which is f x plus g x into u this is one form and that can be written as say x plus x square plus u. So, this is your f x and g x is 1 here. The aim is to find a and b such that in a neighborhood of operating point x naught f x u equal to uh, f x plus g x u which is a x plus b u. Okay. So, how do we find out that? So, when x naught equal to 0 a is dou f upon dou x, x equal to 0, u equal to 0 and b equal to dou f by dou u, x equal to 0, u equal to 0 using Taylor series expansion. This thing we already know that how we given this nonlinear function uh, f, uh, we can find out this a and b simply differentiating uh, the f uh, uh, by x. Okay. So, when x naught is not equal to 0 and if a i transpose denote the i th row of a, then a i is dou, dou f upon dou x x equal to x naught plus f i x naught minus x naught transpose dou f upon dou x on x equal to x naught upon x naught norm whole square into x naught b equal to g x naught. Okay. So, the reference 
uh, you can find out this reference systems and control uh, given uh, written by Jack. There are many other uh, classical textbook you can follow how to linearize a nonlinear system. I think also we covered this uh, notion also earlier in the class. The store rules of the T S Fuzzy model uh, using T S Fuzzy model. So, our system was x dot was x plus x square plus u. You can easily see that x plus x square plus u. So, that is our system. So, rule 1 if x equal to 0 x dot is. Uh, so, I differentiate this with respect to x. So, I get 2 x plus 1 at x equal to 0. So, if I differentiate this quantity 2 x plus 1 at x equal to 0. So, this will give you uh, 1 x equal to 0 the value is 1. So, into x. So, x plus u because dou f by dou x at x equal to 0 into x plus actually delta x, but since the operating point is 0. So, delta x is same as x plus dou f upon dou u. So, the since the coefficient here is 1 dou f upon dou u is uh, 1 and into u. Okay. So, a 1 is 1 b 1 is 1. Similarly, if x equal to 1 then we implement the second one because when x not equal to 0 then we implement this rule and by implementing that we get x dot is 2 x plus u and a 2 that means a 2 is 2 and b 2 is 1. This is simply a scalar system a scalar differential equation. Similarly, this same thing can be also duplicated to the uh, vector differential equation. So, the linear model parameters a j and b j can also be identified. Uh, this is the first method was by simply linearizing. If I know a nonlinear system dynamics and if I think that is an exact model, the best way is to not to waste again system identification, simply linearize this system around various operating zones okay? and define the fuzzy partitioning and then uh, do the uh, linearization. But the linear model parameter A J S uh, sorry, but this also can be identified using a fuzzy neural network. So, from the input output data of the system, I have given a system, I generate input output data, train a fuzzy neural network. So, when using a fuzzy neural network, the elements of A J and B J are weights of the neural network. Least square cost function is used to find the proper weights. Weights are updated using the standard gradient descent algorithm as well. So, this is simple. So, what is that? These are my states x 1 k, x i k, x n k until. So, these are my states and I have m rules okay. and uh, corresponding to each rule I have a fuzzy membership uh, a linear neural network whose input is x k and u k and output is x k plus 1, output is x k plus 1. So, similarly corresponding to each rule I have a linear neural network and finally, I we do the defuzzification to compute what is the actual x k plus 1. So, this fuzzy neural network also can be used to derive the T s fuzzy model of a nonlinear system. So, we identify that and this is my if I these, these neural network weights once after identification they become they because for example, this one is the linear model for the rule 1, this one the linear model for rule j and this one is the linear model for rule m. So, see earlier in the beginning of the class we said T s fuzzy model, I hope that you understood uh, by this uh, discussion. Now, we also talked in the beginning common input matrix, you see. So, what is this common input matrix? Now, you see that the, the discrete time T s fuzzy model was given by x k plus 1 is a bar x k plus b bar u k and continuous time of T s fuzzy model similarly x dot is a bar x plus b bar u, where a bar is sigma uh, sigma j a j 
uh, summation over all rules. Similarly, b bar is sigma j b j over all rules, but this system you will be will have a common input matrix when b j is b for all j. So, where b is a constant matrix. So, if I can define the system dynamics in terms of a common uh, input matrix b b is a constant matrix if I do that. Uh, and then I can always uh, uh, design uh, sorry uh, that gives us certain advantage. If uh, So, what I am trying to say is that uh, for if uh, x is uh, some fuzzy zone, then if my state vector in a specific position j, then all that I am saying is that my x dot is a j x plus b u not b j b u and where is a b is a constant matrix. So, this is called common input and this b matrix is same for all the rules this B matrix is same for all the rules. So, when this is done, then such a system is known as a T s Fuzzy model with common input matrix. Input matrix is common for all linear subsystem. Uh, why we are interested in such a system? Uh, so, let us take a ball beam system. In ball beam system, the ball and wave system is a nonlinear system. The beam is made to rotate by applying torque at the center of rotation. The ball is free to roll along the beam. The ball position and beam angle are donated, denoted by r and theta respectively. The dynamics of ball and beam system can be represented uh, with the state vector x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 as r r dot and theta theta dot as x 1 dot is x 2, x 2 dot is b, x 1 x 4 whole square minus g x 3, x 3 dot is x 4, x 4 dot is u, y is x 1. So, single output and single input. If the above system is linearized around a different operating points, all subsystems will have a same input matrix which is b is 0 0 0 1, this is important. So, by making v equal to 0 0 0 1 uh, sorry uh, this this linearization of the system dynamics will always lead to b matrix for all subsystems linear subsystems the mean matrix is always 0 0 0 1. This is a practical example okay, that exists a physical system for which the, the for all linear subsystems the in matrix control matrix is 0 0 0 1. Okay, so, so that is common. So, utility of common input matrix, what is the advantage of common input matrix? Of course, when B's are same for that means there must be some advantage because system is now simpler. Suppose we design individual linear controller for individual subsystem. Okay, I have that say uh, because now I have m uh, linear subsystems. Okay. So, controlling the uh, this complete nonlinear system means they involve controlling m subsystems capital m subsystems so now i am saying okay now you have the freedom to design because the linear system means for any linear system we know where we we have adequate technology or adequate tools adequate methodologies for designing controllers so what we are doing here is that that let us design control action for each subsystem. So, the control action corresponding to the j subsystem is denoted by e, u j k that stabilizes that subsystem. If all linear subsystems have a common input matrix B, then an overall control input of the form u k is sigma j u j k. Okay. This will ensure that individual subsystems are excited by their respective control inputs. This can be established by the following theorem. So, what I am trying to say, see this is my actual plant. 
I give u and I get x the response right to the plan. Now, I have these are all the apparent subsystems linear subsystems this is and fuji merging of these linear subsystem fuji merging of these linear subsystems gives us the actual plant dynamics. So, controlling this u means I give to the plant only u. So, that is obviously my input to this plant to this subsystem also should be u, but instead what I have done I have stabilized this by giving a input u j, but I cannot give this u j to the plant plant is given u, but if I can compute this u in terms of u j using this formula. Okay it says that if I have a common input matrix for all the subsystem, then such a control action u k, which is written in terms of individual control action u j implies that individual control subsystems are excited by u j k. So, this is a theorem for a class of T s for the system with common input matrix in all fuzzy zones, the actual control action u k will imply that j th subsystem is excited by the control action u j k for all j where u k is the fuzzy blending of all individual control action. You must recognize this u j is actually fake we do not apply to any actual system. This u j is simply a control action that is given that is uh, that means, if I give u to the actual plant it implies this plant is experiencing and control action not u, but u j k this is important. So, if I am giving a control action u k to the actual plant individual plant are not being excited by u k rather u j k this is very important only if the all the subsystems of the uh, T s Fuzzy model are having a common input matrix otherwise not this is the important thing. So, the fuzzy dynamics of a common input matrix can be represented as x k plus 1 is that we have already shown that sigma i a j j equal to 1 to m which is a bar similarly sigma j b not b j because common input matrix j equal to 1 to m. Okay. So, we expanded that now you can write this one I can club this j equal to 1 to m sigma j a j x k plus b u u k this is the total thing sorry 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 uh, this is not total. So, this is my one term and you can easily see this term is actually 1 sigma j j equal to 1 to m hence this is simply b u k where b is the common for all linear subsystems substituting the control input u k. So, what is u k now u k is j equal to 1 to m sigma j u j k and here I can separate this term. So, c j equal to 1 to m sigma j a j and x k. Okay. So, this is my a bar okay. and so we started with we gave a uh, input u k which is uh, summation of this uh, individual thing. Now, we will re rewrite this equation then you see that x k plus 1 is sigma j is a x k plus uh, here I can bring this this quantity this quantity to this side and b inside simply b I put inside because this is anyway common. So, b inside and use a k. So, doing that what I am trying to do is that here this is actually again this quantity is 1. So, uh, no what we uh, we are doing here is that uh, this now we have this this total thing that is uh, I can write now rewrite j equal to 1 to m sigma j and a j x k here and the sigma j is to common here and b u j k 
I can rewrite that. So, what is meaning of this? Meaning of this is that this is a fuzzy combination of a j x k plus b u j k. So, individual system is actually excited by u j when actually uh, I have excited the global system by u k. So, what I showed in this theorem that if I give u k to my actual system plant, this implies my linear subsystems are being excited by u j that is the meaning of this that is the meaning of this method. So, it is clear from the above equation that j -th subsystem is excited by u j k and proved corollary. If j -th subsystem can be stabilized by control action u j k then the actual control input can be computed as u k is this sigma j equal to 1 to m sigma j u j k and it can be analyzed whether this control action stabilize the entire T s for the system. This approach is not valid when the subsystems have different input matrices which is very important to have. So, when the subsystems have a common input matrix T s for the model dynamics. So, closed loop system dynamics with common input matrix. When so, I, I explained to you that what is meaning of common input matrix. Common input matrix means that uh, the um, if the actual plant is uh, excited by capital U k, then the actual subsystems are excited by the individual control action U j. So, that gives us a fairly good method or a good tool for us to design linear controllers. So, now for such common input matrix what will be the closed loop dynamics? The T s posi model dynamics is sigma j a j x k which I have already told you okay, this quantity is a bar plus b u k. So, when u k is this type we have already said the closed loop system dynamics is given by this simply I replaced u k by this particular term this is input. So, uh, now assume that u j k is minus k j x k such that j th linear subsystem is stable. Okay. This I am assuming such that j th system subsystem is stable. Okay. If j th subsystem is stable then the closed loop system dynamics is minus this this is this will retain this quantity is same and this quantity is here because this minus is coming here u j k is minus k. So, minus terms is retained here and sigma j uh, this quantity is this quantity uh, this this quantity is retained here instead of u j k minus k j x k. All right. So, that gives you if you look at that that gives you the final value here because uh, uh, this is b k j I can multiply and then this becomes a j minus b k j sigma j is common and this side x k and this side x k. So, this is my closed loop dynamics. So, what implies that the common input matrix makes our closed loop system dynamics is very simple. This is very important. So, if we denote a j minus b k j by a j dash, the closed loop dynamics becomes this particular thing, where a j dash is a j minus b k j. We can design cases in such a way that a j days are stable. Okay. So, so now the point is that we have designed, we can find u k in such a way that a j days are stable, but now x k plus 1 this is the closed loop dynamics this is the closed loop dynamics. So, my stability is simply depends I know already a j days are stable. So, now given a j days are stable these this quant these matrices are stable can I say that if I write this one 
as a bar x k where a bar where a bar is simply j equal to 1 to m sigma j a j dash. Since this is there, I will put this dash also here. Okay. So, a dash bar. So, if I say, can I say if a j dash uh, uh, are stable, then a bar is stable. You may say oh it should be, but it is not. If A z is stable does not imply directly A bar is stable. Okay. So, we will find in this lecture what are the condition for which if A z is are stable then A bar is stable. Okay. So, that is the point. So, to show the closed loop system stability the common input matrix we have to analyze the stability of this quantity and stability of this quantity where edges are stable. Okay. This part I will not talk because this is this simply says that when the subsystems have a different input matrices then the uh, closed loop uh, the different then if I find out I designed uh, u l k the individual systems as minus k l x k then x k plus 1 is given by this particular uh, term and you see that here we cannot represent uh, the way we represented the reason is the above equation shows that there are cross terms in the closed loop dynamics when j is not equal to l. All right, and because of this cross terms that is coming here, because if it had it been B, it's simple, but it is B J, so this makes our life a little diff tough. <coughs> so now we will go to the uh, actual stability analysis. So stability analysis is common input matrix that we have now simplified. The closed loop dynamics for discrete time case is x k plus 1 is sigma j a j dash x k and where a j dash is simply a minus b k j. Okay. So, k j is the associated state feedback uh, for jth uh, so linear subsystem. So, the closed loop dynamics for continuous time case similarly for the exactly this is discrete time. So, this is my uh, the closed loop dynamics of the uh, continuous time where a z s is a z minus b k. We will now provide various theorem which will ensure stability of this quantity. Okay. So, that is we would like to say because now this can be written as a bar x k and this can be written as a bar x t. So, if a j days are stable can I say a bar is stable this is the theorem. So, stability analysis theorem 2 for discrete time T s for the system x k plus 1 uh, this is my T s for the system with common input matrix with u k is given in terms of fuzzy blending of individual control action and the control action is taken in such a way that individual subsystems are stable then the closed loop system x k plus 1 which is given by this is stable if the singular values of individual a j days are less than unity where a j days is a j minus b k j. Okay. So, here the proof is the induced Euclidean norm or second norm of a real matrix A is given by a second norm the induced norm is the maximum singular value of a matrix and what is that the maximum singular value of a matrix is computed as the maximum Asian value of a transpose a and take the square root. So, I compute the maximum Asian value of a transpose a and take the square root then I find maximum singular value of a where 
alpha max a is the largest singular value of a and lambda max a transpose a is the largest agent value of a transpose a. Fact 1, singular values of a real matrix are real and positive, this is very important. Singular values of real matrix are real and positive. Fact 2, largest singular value of any matrix A is always greater than the magnitude of the largest Asian value of that matrix, this is very important. Largest singular value of any matrix A is always greater than the magnitude of the largest Asian value of that matrix, this is important. Okay, this is this I hope that you know this from the matrix algebra. So, now let us denote A bar dash as j equal to 1 to m sigma j a j dash. If all a j dash have singular values less than unity, right, then obviously the induced norm of a j dash, which is maximum value of a j dash, uh, is less than 1. Okay. So, this is so, since alpha max a bar dash the sing largest singular value is given because we are saying in the theorem if the largest singular value is less than 1 of all individual uh, if individual matrix uh, singular value of individual the largest singular value of the individual matrix is less than unity less than 1 then the system is stable that is what we are saying. Okay. So, you see that now let me find out what is the largest singular value of A bar. The largest singular of A bar is induced norm of it which is induced norm A bar dash is sigma j A j dash A bar is simply this and then you see that using triangular inequality because these are summation. So, summation is uh, sorry this is sorry summation of two product means by triangular inequality is always less than equal to summation of individual absolute product that is sigma j a j norm. So, now I know this a j norm is represented by alpha max a j dash and I know already that this quantity alpha max of a j dash always less than 1 I am assuming that I know let us say the a all a j days uh, uh, in this uh, uh, T s Fuzzy model they have maximum uh, singular value less than 1. So, because of that I can write this as because this is quantity is less than 1. So, this is less than equal to sigma j and you know that j equal to 1 to m sigma j is 1. So, this is less than 1. So, alpha max the largest singular value of a dash is also less than 1 and we have already said the largest singular value is always which we said earlier you see that largest singular value of any matrix a is always greater than the magnitude of largest agent value of that matrix. So, that is since we proved the largest singular value of a bar is less than 1 means largest eigen value of a bar is also less than 1 and for discrete time case the largest eigen value the magnitude should be less than 1 it should be unity circle. You know already that given a discrete time system okay, the, the poles should be within the unity circle. So, what we said in this theorem that if my individual subsystem in the closed loop form a j dash they have a singular value less than 1 the maximum singular value then the overall uh, closed loop system matrix a bar also will have the singular value less than 1 implying that this system is stable. Okay. Now, utility of theorem 2 the proof of theorem 2 is based on maximum singular values not on maximum Eisen values. Utility of the theorem making use of this theorem the overall system stabilized if this system there exists a common input matrix B for all subsystem the individual gain matrices K j s are designed such that A z s which I have already told is A z minus B k j have 
singular values less than unity, this design techniques fails if the system is in controllable canonical form. In controllable canonical form, when all the poles are at origin, we can get minimum value of induced norm as 1. Okay. Stability analysis theorem 3. Now, earlier we talked about discrete time, now we will be talking about continuous time. For continuous time T s for the systems, x dot T is this quantity, which, which is our T s Fuzzy model. This is our normal Fuzzy model, with our again the control action u t is sigma j u j t and u j t is minus k j x t. The closed loop system x dot t is stable if the Hermitian part of a j s are stable, where a j s is a j minus b k j. Fact 1. Any matrix A can be written as A equal to half A A plus transpose plus half A minus A transpose. Half A plus A transpose is known as Hermitian part of A. This is a Hermitian part. So, you, see, you can easily see that this, this total multiplication, this will cancel out. So, this is 2 A by A, A 2 A by 2 is A, but this is actually Hermitian part, this is non-Hermitian part. Fact 2 if half a plus a transpose is stable, then a is also stable. That is real parts of a's and values of a are all negative. Fact 3, if a is stable, that does not imply that half of a a transpose is also stable. The reverse is not true. Okay. If this is stable, then I can say a is stable, but if a is stable, we cannot say a plus a transpose is stable also stable. So, proof the matrix measure gamma corresponding to the Euclidean norm of a real matrix A is defined as that the maximum Eisen value of the Hermitian part of the A. Since A transpose A by 2 the Hermitian part of A is a real symmetric matrix, its Eisen values are real. So, if the Hermitian part of A is a is stable that is half a z s plus a z dash transpose is stable, then the matrix measure of a z dash which is the lambda maximum of this matrix is always less than 0, the maximum Eisen value. Since the matrix measure satisfies the triangular inequality, I can write the measure of my overall matrix a z bar is gamma into summation j equal to 1 to n, and this is the individual a z s. And now, this can be written in terms of, this is less than equal to, I can take this gamma inside using triangular inequality, because the summation. And so, the individual is sigma j gamma a z s, okay, because matrix measure satisfies the triangular inequality by using that theorem. So, we can say that this is less than this and since I know that the matrix measure of this is the maximum Eisen value of this quantity which is always less than 0. So, and sigma j is always greater than 0 and this is a negative quantity, this is a negative quantity, this is a positive quantity, the summation will be always negative. Hence, the proof is if this is stable a j bar is also stable. So, the theorem second theorem says for linear subsystem sorry linear uh, sorry continuous time system the overall fuzzy blending of this uh, systems will be stable provided the Hermitian part of the individual subsystems. So, this is my Hermitian part of the individual subsystem that is stable. So, utility of the theorem making use of this theorem the overall system can be stabilized if there exists a common input matrix B for all subsystems and the individual gain matrix K J are designed such that this has a stable Hermitian part. So, we can always design this because I can always design such that this is a stable Hermitian part it is not a difficult thing. So, limitation of theorem t, uh, 3 if the subsystem uh, 
or in controllable canonical form Hormesian part of the overall matrix will be unstable. Okay. Consider a second order system like this, the Hermitian part is given like this, the characteristic equation is given, it is very simple. This implies that uh, half A transpose A is unstable, this is an unstable system. So, if the subsystems are in controllable canonical form, the Hermitian part of the overall matrix will be unstable. Good news, however, for second order system in controllable canonical form, stability of individual systems is sufficient to ensure the global stability. Suppose, individual systems are described by the following equation, the second order, characteristic characteristics equation of jth system is this, thus the characteristic equation of overall system is this. For the subsystem to be stable, the necessary as well as sufficient condition is A j 1 and A j 1 must be positive. This implies that this particular summation and this particular summation are also positive. Hence, the overall system is stable. This is a simple uh, uh, logic. So, now we will go to theorem 4. For both discrete and continuous time T s fuzzy system, the closed loop system x k plus 1, uh, uh, which is given like this, or the in continuous time x dot is sigma j a z s x t is stable, if each individual a z s matrix is symmetric where a z s is a z minus b k j. Proof a matrix a is symmetric if a is a transpose, thus for a symmetric matrix a one can write a is half a transpose a that means it does not have a non hermitian part. If each individual a z s is symmetric then a z s is half a z s transpose plus a z for all z. In this case the maximum Eisen value of a z s equal to the matrix measure of a z s. Hence the proof of the continuous time T s fuzzy system is similar to the matrix measure approach we used in the previous theorem. Again for symmetric matrix singular values equal to magnitude of Eisen values. Therefore, the proof for discrete time T s fuzzy system is same as that of induced norm approach. Utility of the theorem making use of this theorem the overall system can be stabilized if there exists a common input matrix B for all subsystems and the individual gain matrix as KZ is are designed such that A Z is equal to A Z minus B K Z are symmetric. So, now we will uh, so skip these things now we will give some simulation results for search tank the output of the system is uh, the level the liquid level which is to be controlled by input flow input can be positive or negative discrete time dynamical equation of a source tank is h k plus 1 is h k plus t and you can see that this is a nonlinear dynamics and also u k upon uh, root over 3 h k plus 1. This is a first order system the system can be made stable by designing stabilizing control for different fuzz erosion. So, you say that what we did that we used a fuzzy neural network to identify these uh, T s fuzzy model. You see that there are uh, the system is identified using, in using in the system is identified using the input output model. The output range was 0 to 10 number of fuzzy clusters are 5. So, the 5 rules T s fuzzy model of the system is described by following 5 rules. If x k is around 2 then x k plus 1 is 0 0.98 something plus 0 0.0032 uh, uk and so on. Rule 2 is if x k is around 4 then x k plus 1 0.991423 x k 0 0.003928. So, like that you can easily see uh, although B matrix is varying, but almost similar that is why uh, the, the, the method that we said is also applicable here. Uh, so, the result of system, uh, system identification we generated data from the source tank model, trained a fuzzy neural network and you see that the, the, the data, uh, the, the, the trajectory, the desired trajectory and the predicted trajectory, they exactly match. Okay. So, applying the global control, the overall system becomes uh, like this, where the individual subsystems is uh, controlled by state feedback. Okay. And, uh, Individual K L de designed for this system meets this criteria, hence the controller stabilizes the global system. Since the overall output H K is this quantity, the output here is H K. 
S j k is the jth subsystem output. If each individual subsystem tracks a reference input r, then the overall system will also track r. The controller thus becomes, you see this is our state feedback part and this is my part for tracking. So, where k j and j are feedback and feed forward gains for j th system to track the reference input r. Okay. So, if the simulation results is presented in the following figure, the left figure shows the output of the system and the right figure shows the corresponding input that means, the control action and this is my the height. So, I am tracking I am set point tracking from 4 to 1 again 4 to 1 and this is very perfect tracking you can easily see and controller is almost very smooth. Okay. And you see that the gains that the feedback gain and feed forward gain that were obtained you can easily see here they are a time varying nature because this is a nonlinear system it cannot have a, a fixed gain constant gain it has a time when a variable gain. So, variation of state feedback gains against this system state is also shown in the following figure. Now, we take the second example which is a wonderful uh, oscillator. Uh, most of you have studied this in the introduction to nonlinear system because this is a very uh, classic example of uh, a, a nonlinear system x 1 dot is x 2, x 2 dot is this quantity and y is x 1 single input single output system. Okay. And if I linearize the system I have this particular form and you can easily see my B matrix is 0 1, my B matrix is 0 1 and hence this is common for all subsystems and in the A matrix also 0 1 is common for all subsystems only the second row they vary according to x 1 x 2 and x 1 square. So, we can linearize that and one example is if x t is around 0 then x dot t is 0 1 minus 1 2 x t 0 1 u t and similarly we have 49 rules using this the controller is designed okay the tracking is achieved by placing the closed loop poles for all subsystems at minus 3 and minus 3.5 the feed forward gain is same for all subsystems thus the control action is given by the following equation okay and you see this is my state feedback controller for regulation and this is my tracking the reference signal okay so the tracking result you see the tracking is very very perfect very good tracking given uh, uh, set point variation and this is my control input. So, the simulation result is presented in the following figure the left figure shows the output of the system the right figure shows the corresponding input this is my control action and this is my output. Okay. So, variation of the state feedback you can easily see again uh, these gains are variable you know it is not a flat surface this is a variable gain for k 1 and k 2. Okay. Summary in this lecture the following topics have been covered a general nonlinear system is represented as a T s fuzzy model local linear model parameters of T s fuzzy model are identified using a fuzzy neural network different theorems have been presented to ensure stability of the closed loop system when the subsystems have a common input matrix in this case the global controller has been designed as a convex combination of the local linear controllers. Similar results have been presented for two nonlinear systems. That is all. Thank you very much.